What's going on, everybody? Gonna start going back this way into doing videos. I know this is kind of like Zoom to OBS type deal, so you guys see that little banner real quick. But I've been, uh, well, most of you guys know I was down with COVID for a while. Um, did a lot of thinking because, <clears throat> excuse me, still got some stuff in my good old chest. But uh, just doing some thinking, like, what do I really want to accomplish next year? I know it's early, huh? Um, versus, you know, did I do my goals for 2023? I would say for the most part, yes. I did pick up some nice pieces out there that I could hold on to. But I think I'm going to start tailoring back in 2024 and setting up at a lot less card shows. I may do about four a year total. And that will be me rotating between Indiana and Kentucky. And of course, when I am going to be set up, I'll let you guys know in case you want to stop by a table, whatever it may be. Um, if I know you and stuff, you're more than welcome behind the table. Come chill with me, too. People do it all the time. But I've been looking at a lot of things in an overall aspect. And I mean, not to go, you know, be a dead horse on the good old hobby heroes where they've gone, all that stuff, and how their great advice has just screwed the pooch on a lot of stuff. And we're not going to talk about how Fanatic sucks, Panini sucks, and stuff like that. But, I mean, just by looking at it overall, I think that I'm going to move back more into the collector mode than um, buying to resell next year. Now, don't get me wrong. I'll still buy collections out and stuff like that there. But I don't think I'm going to go to card shows just to go spend two, three thousand dollars $3,000 at a show. For the purpose of either, you know, a video to move cards and everything else, because there's there's a lot of different places I can move stuff at, but it gets draining after a while, I'm not going to lie. And then you always got to sit there and put up the fight, you know, salesperson versus buyer and all that stuff out there. Um, I, I think the way for next year is going to be a lot of stuff's going to be listed on eBay. I may start throwing stuff back onto the website itself. Hint, hint, Black Friday. Um, and from there, you know, start more buying things that I want to hold on to that are rare overall. So hopefully that makes a little bit of more sense overall. And I did pick up some nice stuff this year, like the White Whale Drew Brees from Topps Triple Threads. I got my Wemby rookie, got the other Jordan. Um, trying to think of some of the other stuff. That nice LeBron shoelaces, probably the only one out there that was redeemed from my understanding. Stuff like that there is what I want to start grabbing more than um, just going to a show and buying like 20 cars just to grade then to try to cut profits onto it. Because the more I look at, the less and less that you're going to start seeing on these profits. And you guys know I've been speaking to this for years. I'm not somebody just came out though within this past year telling you that sports card values are dipping. Um, I'm not going to call it a market because anybody who treats us like a market, in my opinion, is just freaking an idiot. Uh, it, it's it's not. This is was a hobby to begin with, and there's values on cards. Uh, and you could use many different methods to find a true value out there. But the piece that's coming down to it, everybody's going to, you know, when you're on a dealer standpoint... Dealers want to buy at a, at a good rate, which they should because they're paying for all their booth and everything else out there. Don't get me wrong. But when you look at it overall, you know, buyers are wanting to come up to dealers behind their tables out at like 50, 60%, 70% if they're, you know, a good table. I just, I'm uh, not really done with that there. I'd rather go set up a show, not have to worry if I don't sell nothing. It don't bother me. It's more about the experience going there, meeting people and stuff like that there. I don't want to have to sit there and go to shows to where I need to sell this. Oh, man, I haven't sold enough today to pay for this, this, and that. No. that that's I'm going to look at a different aspect coming up this year. Um, I will still go to shows to look around and buy and stuff like that there. But it, it's going to be either because I really want the card... Or, you know, possibly I could get the card, use this trade, or sell it to somebody else, make a couple dollars, and buy something I want down the road. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Um, I want to start doing more back to where we were two, three years ago with the videos, too, where I just come on here. 
Um, not saying everything I say is 100% going to be right and don't go because I'm buying, I don't know, Aaron Judge rookie autos. Don't go doing what I'm doing. I'm just out there trying to find the rare stuff because my thought process is this. One day there's going to be another little boom out there. I would rather have the more of the rare stuff than something that's a PSA 10 pop. 20,000, 10,000, 15,000, which we've covered out a long way back. I'm still getting some breaks and stuff coming up, uh, but I think I'm going to start hunting what I really want out there because the prices are there, and I think it's still, the values are still going to drip down on a lot of different players out there. Don't get me wrong, player performances, awards, all that kind of stuff, that's, that's still going to, you know, Make stuff go up and down and back and forth and all that out there. But I think I'm going to go back more towards the collect. I should say I think. I know I'm going to go more towards the collector's end next year. Now when I pick up collections and stuff, I'm not going to go out there hunting them like I used to on Facebook and stuff like that. There, If one approaches me out of the blue and it makes sense, I'll do it. But uh, there's a lot of time and effort that goes into that stuff. I would rather just sit back and enjoy, you know, like I did back in 18 and 19, I would say, you know, the hobby itself with, you know, picking up cards. Hey, this is a cool card. It's, you know, this and that. With Fanatics, man, they just had way too many parallels come out. They basically just stuck their own foot in their own mouth out there. So I probably, well, you won't see me getting anything like that. I'll probably buy some Upper Deck stuff to open up here and there. Um, but no, it's not the end all, all be all for me. I, you always, every year for me, I like to revamp myself for the next year. And sometimes it goes good. Sometimes it doesn't, but I think going out and looking for cards just to resell is going to be the biggest thing I want to move away from. Do I like going through dollar boxes and find stuff cheap? Yeah. It's fun and stuff like that there. Occasionally you find a diamond in a rough out there and stuff like that there. But I, I think like next year when I start looking, you know, I usually have a running list of about 20 to 30 cards I'd like to purchase that year. I'm going to look more for those cards there than I am going to dealers' tables being like, oh man, that dude's underpriced, you know, 25%. I need to pick that up and I can resell it and make 15% profit, blah, 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 blah. So a little bit different. It'll be coming up next year in the videos. All right, so I just have this up. This is uh, Sports Collectors Daily. There's all kind of articles and stuff on here just so we have something in the background today. Lots of different things going on in the hobby. You guys already seen the Wemby uh, mania still going wild. Not doing bad out there. I've been looking a lot and talking to a lot of people going to card shows. I even heard this past Dallas show had a lot of dry points where it was not busy. There were dead times, especially Friday, but uh, some of that could be because the Rangers World Series um, parade was that day. But I heard that Saturday there were points during the morning and afternoon where it was dead. And it makes me think that a lot of people are starting to push away from card collecting and they probably either put it in a box, you know, saving it for a rainy day. Maybe they'll venture to it somewhere next year around National. Or they're just selling, getting out and saying, hey, I'm going to go find something else to do. Maybe they fish, hunt, I don't know, play cornhole, something out there. But I, I've been looking at the shows overall that I've been either set up at or gone as, buy, as a buyer. And I'll tell you, there's some shows, there's money that floats around there. If you know who the people are, they're always buying, then you know there's money it shows. But what happens when those people don't show up? You know, as a dealer, it sucks. And then you're at the mercy of like, do I really want to let this go for this amount of money just so I can say I made money today? And I, like I said, that's where I'll be a lot less shows setting up. I want to say it's going to be four next year total that I'm looking at doing. And that way there, I could, you know, rotate inventory. I don't have to sit there and be overstressed like oh i gotta get all kind of new stuff for the next show da, da, da. change out inventory and stuff like that well i could do that very easily it just you know comes to a point to where it's like eh, do i really want to keep doing it that way and burning the midnight oil sitting there searching stuff not really 
<laughs> as you get older, you guys will understand. <laughs> Some of you guys that are, you know, still in your 20s and 30s, you can do that. When you start getting, oh, I'm over mid-40s, we'll just say that. But, you know, you start looking at different things out there and that. But don't get me wrong, I still like uh, the cards and everything out there. It's just there's a lot of stuff going on out there that I've been talking about for the last two, three years that's slowly starting to be like, I don't know if I want to touch this newer stuff. And I, like I said, I'd rather go out there and go find some, you know, stuff at a show and that. Let's see here. There was something I thought I saw on here. Tim Duncan autograph set to return in basketball packs next year. I haven't really seen a whole lot of his stuff out there. That's a good piece. I was a fan of Tim Duncan for the Spurs for years. Um, him, David Robinson. There's just a lot of the older stuff. Because I start thinking back like when Robinson was still with the Navy and stuff like that there. The Dream Team, all that stuff. There's just a lot of history behind it. Not saying that now none of these newer guys can make history on their own and stuff, but I'm looking more like the history from way back in the day. So here's the big thing. WWE files against Panini. From what I've heard on to this is that the NFLPA and WWE, there's two different, uh, I guess, court things. And you also got Panini versus Fanatics, da-da-da. I guess that's now moved to from Florida to New York. So Fanatics kind of got a little home turf now going on up there. WWE claimed Panini expected to merge with Fanatics last year, but that deal fell apart early this year. They claim the exodus of Panini employees to Fanatics hurt the company's ability to deliver under the terms of its current contract, Penny disagrees, blah, 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 blah. WWE thinks they're in their rights. Penny doesn't. Same thing. WWE wants to use Fanatics for their cards. Of course. So, with this here, from what I've understood with this uh, WWE and Panini, Panini still can produce WWE cards, but WWE is giving them a hard time about giving them what they need. Now, from what I heard, there was something with Select WWE that just came out. I don't know if it was like the hybrid or something like that there, where it was like an envelope or like one card for something like that. So it just makes you wonder, you know, how much with all this bickering between all these lawsuits and stuff, is it going to hurt values even more coming up here with this stuff? I, I think we're going to have a full year in 2024 of these court cases. I don't think anything's really going to get settled. And I think as we approach into 2025, we'll start seeing, I think that's the NFL goes in 2025 to Fanatics full-time. I think we'll start seeing a lot of different stuff out there. But like I said, I probably won't buy any. I'll, if I like, if I want a card, I'm just going to go buy it. I think there's just way too many freaking parallels out there. And they just keep adding and adding and adding and adding. It's kind of like that late 80s, early 90s, where they just produced that crap load of stuff. But the only difference is now we have all these serial numbers and waves to, oh my gosh, speckles and dots and circles and freaking emojis out there. Whoever they're putting in these great idea fairies out there. And these corporations are just doing a very horrible job out there overall. If it was me, I would limit to what these parallels are per year, per product and stuff, and try to cut down half of that stuff. I understand if you want to inflate your bases like it was for the set builders back in the late 80s, early 90s and stuff. But when you start saying this one card has 63 variations of it, that's ridiculous. Cut it down to the old Bowman colors for Bowman. And if you want to start making like maybe one SSP type deal and you're like, okay, well, this year I want to make it the X-Frac or whatever, then do that. But instead of having it in every single product and every single variation, and we have light boxes and fast break boxes and all this other stuff. Just more and more production out there. They're just beating it to no end out there. And the bad part is the consumers are buying it.
All right, let's take a look here. I think that was pretty much it. I don't want to be really long-winded on this video. Uh, I wanted to just hit some different pieces onto it real quick. Uh, you guys seen the Babe Ruth uh, $200,000 bounty that was pulled by Bulldog Sports Cards out in California. <laughs> $200,000 for... I mean, whoever got that, good for them, man. I'd take that money and run, too. But it just sucks when it comes tax time because now you're taxed on it. And because of that higher tax, with that amount of money, you now would have originally would have got a refund, say, out of your taxes. You're not anymore because now you're in a higher tax bracket you weren't paying in, so you got to pay extra now on that. Uh, but just look at this stuff overall. I mean, it's crazy stuff going on out there. We're going to hit some of the other stuff coming up here in future videos. Um... I'm not like I said. I'm not really going to hit where the, all the great hobby heroes have gone because I think that's been really touched. The scams we've talked about that through the years and everything like that. We might pull one here or there up, talk about a type deal, but more likely this is going to turn into just like I said, me jibber jabbered. I'll probably start doing some lives again, um, coming on there, seeing who's still out there, who's still collecting. Still see you guys commenting, checking in, stuff like that out there. It's pretty cool. Um, because sometimes you're like, wow, I haven't seen this guy comment for a while. And it's like, I'm still here, still watching. I'll <laughs> just check it in type deal. And it's just kind of cool to still see if people are still out there watching the videos. Um, they're still out there, you know, collecting cards, looking to see what they could find out there and everything else. All right, guys, that's it. Pretty much ending 2023 here in about under two months. And, oh, I do owe you guys a video coming up of what the grand prize for Gridiron Games is. So be on the lookout for that video after this weekend. All right, guys, that's it. I'm out. Catch you next one.